Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're still doing our pandemic projects and I got a viewer reel today. This is uh, from Nate and uh, it's a pen squitter. It's the 140 and it's the long cage uh, squitter with the burgundy side plates made in the USA. It has a beautiful uh, uh, picture here of a angler doing some surf casting. And uh, this was at the time one of the best darn reels. Still is a good darn reel. But one of the best on reels you can buy for the money and uh, use in surf casting because of the side ball bearings. Uh, the views tells me that it's having problems with the drags and uh, we'll go see. It's probably just worn drags and uh, we're going to go ahead and replace them. It's just a good practice if you, even if we can't see what the problem is. Good idea just to go ahead and replace them for the expense. Drags only run about $10 for a reel uh, plus shipping and handling. You're going to take the reel apart if you have problems with the drags. Start with the drag washers. Typically the drag washers in these older reels were leather. They dry and break and that's where you have the problems. If they happen to be the, the newer version of the fabric washer, the HT100, they tend to wear and slip. So uh, we're going to go ahead and service the whole reel. I'll show you how to do that if you have one of these reels. And uh, you, you'll be able to go do it yourself. And uh, if you are thinking of buying one, you'll see the technology behind this reel and uh, why it's, it's a favorite for a lot of folks, particularly those that do the surf casting. So I start by removing the external pieces and parts. As I do that, I, uh, as you note, know, I wear a protective glove on my hand to keep the oils and greases out. And uh, I also uh, use a parts tray to put all the pieces and parts into so that uh, when it comes time to reinstall, then uh, I can uh, easily reach for them and know where they are. This one has a single screw take apart. <clears throat> In order to do the single screw take apart, you have to back the screw out. Now, even when you back it out, it's not going to move. This has a spring on it. You need to pull the spring out. You can see the difference. You see how it moves. Pull the spring out and then hold the handle and just a quick turn, and that will free it from its uh, groove. There's three little studs that. Um, the squitter side plate has on it. They run in the three grooves here and that's what you're trying to clear when you reverse. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply take the spool out. I want to just check the internals. Now it's got a burring so I'm going to oil the burring. And while I do that I like to grab a screwdriver just to make sure that the burring is turning, which it is. If it was a frozen burring you would have to go ahead and replace that. So let's go to the side plate then. That's where the the issue seems to be. On the squitter, interestingly enough, you have a side plate where you have an anti-reverse, which is operating now, and if you throw this little lever, you can back it off. It, it, it's an anti-reverse override. So you just want to be aware of that, and when you go to reinstall, you need to understand uh, how to set that. All right, this is a nice chromed side uh, bridge and uh, internal gear works. It'll stand up to the surf. And uh, this one seems to be in pretty good condition. So my, without opening the reel up, I'm going to just guess that uh, we just have worn drags and air dried out drags. All right, I'm removing the four bridge screws. When I remove those, you're going to notice that there's two different types. The ones up top are partially threaded. The ones below are fully threaded. You can see it on my table there. And uh, ones that are partially threaded have springs that are riding on it. So when you go to reinstall, make sure that you install those in the top. All right, while, we, uh, while we're doing this, just a quick pause here to say thank you to our first responders and essential personnel during this pandemic. Uh, we couldn't uh, be where we are without you in terms of on the road to recovery. Do appreciate all your efforts in keeping us safe. And to those of us that don't have a role in that, uh, please do your efforts by maintaining your social distance, wearing the masks, doing the things that the authorities are asking us to do so that we can all get better faster. All right, so I have that. You'll notice I've cupped my hands now. <clears throat> I pushed the bridge through, but there's a, there's a spring in here. Now the spring is inside the dog and it usually doesn't shoot on this one, but in the event that it did, I want to capture it in my hand here rather than having it shoot out to the uh, across the desk. All right, we're going to remove the side plate then. Just going to lay that down for a moment, show you that dog. Here's the dog, and that's the spring that's inside of it that is the anti-reverse spring. 
Not sure if you can see it that well, but there it is. Be careful with that. If you lose it, you got to go get another one. That'll delay your uh, your servicing of the reel. So I like to leave it right in there because I know that's kind of where it belongs. But you can take it out if you want. All right, let's go. Just take a look then at the drag stack. See what's going on here. This has a drag stack for the Penn Long Beach series, the 60s fitted. So when you go to uh, work on these, know that that's the replacement part. Okay, we're going to take this off first as a general servicing. I like to take the gear sleeve off. You can usually do that simply by pushing this pin through, which holds the gear sleeve to the bridge. You'll see that it comes out here, and I'm using a kind of a pin. It's part of an old uh, electric tester to push it through. You can use a, uh, a small headed nail. You can use uh, an awl. You can use other things. That one, even though it's not designed for this, has become one of my fishing reel repair tool friends. You can use it for a lot of things centering holes and the like. When I remove that pin I put it right back in that hole and I put that gear sleeve there. That's so that I can get all the dirty grease off of here. And this bridge shares with, you'll see it's a 3200, that shares the bridge with the Surfmaster. The difference between the Surfmaster and the Squitter is the side plate burrings. The, uh, everything else pretty much is the same. Uh, pieces and parts wise and again those share the drag system and the main gear with the Long Beach. So, so Penn did a lot of sharing with its pieces and parts, thank goodness, because some are interchangeable and it uh, just makes it easier on everybody. Okay, so off this comes, on it goes. Uh, we've greased the, the shaft, now we want to reinstall the bridge sleeve, gear sleeve, push that pin back in, and if it gets a little tight, just grab a piece of pliers and right on the corner of the pliers, push it the rest of the way. You need to make sure that this pin clears this, this sleeve here. Next up, we have a hard washer that goes on. And then we have the drag washers. Now, these drag washers are the newer version. They're the HT100 drag washers. Lots of oil on them, and they're worn. So if there is a problem with the drags, that's what it would be, that you're getting slip in there. While I have the main gear off, I'm going to look at the teeth, make sure that they're uniform and not worn. They're fine. So I'm going to just grease that up. I'm using Pen Precision Real Grease to do the job there. get it a little bit throughout the reel. You don't have to get it in every tooth. It will work its way around over time. And we can grab that gear and put that back on. And that's an example why I wear that glove to keep the oils and stuff off. I'm going to replace these just because I don't like the look of them. They're, they're worn. So I'm going to replace them with three new HD100 dry washers. And while we do that, I'm going to make sure that these get a little coating of Cal's Universal Drag Grease. To do that, I put a little bit onto there, and now I'm using my gloved hand as a tool to rub that grease in. And then I want to use a paper towel just to get any excess off. So that's the first one. These are clean. If they weren't clean, what you could do is you could get some steel wool to knock off the, uh, the balance. If there was any residuals, for example, if you're if you do find yourself with leather washers that are stuck, you can uh, often find that they leave a residue on those metal washers and that will limit your, uh, your performance. The first one was a round washer, now I'm looking for the one that's the eared washer because they have the two little points on it. Again, I'm just going to clean it up, make sure that that's nice and smooth, that there's no ruts or anything, this is fine. And then that ear washer fits in the grooves inside the main gear so you can see it like that. Last of the drag washers then. I'll do the same thing one more time. Slide it around, make sure that it gets a nice even coating of it. Wipe off the excess. Back on with that. And I think between the oils and the worn drag washers, Nate, that if you uh, had a problem with these drag washers, uh, that's probably what was causing the skip. And we have a cap washer that goes on top of that. 
then we have the sleeve that uh, fits on there as well. You can see from this that you have very little bite left in that washer, so my guess is that's probably what has caused this uh, to perform poorly. And uh, I'll give them back to you for your inspection when I return the reel. The last thing to do then is just clean out the rest of the inside. We're going to push down on the yoke so that we can remove the jack. Take that yoke off and pull the two springs that are behind the yoke. And we're just going to go ahead and grab a paper towel. Just get the old dried grease off of there. And again, this reel's in nice condition, so that's a good thing. Some burying in the back, so we'll make sure we do the same thing we did on the other side. A little bit of oil. Also going to just make sure that that burying is performing, which it is. And then we can uh, put these two springs right back into the cavities in the side plate. And it's a good time to tell you, take pictures along the way. If, uh, if I'm going too fast, replay the video. But uh, if you're doing this by yourself on this or another reel, it's always a good thing to take pictures if you're uh, hesitant at all or if you're uh, not familiar with the reel. Just go ahead and take the picture. And that way, if you get stuck, you can go back to the pictures and find out what was the sequence that you took the pieces and parts off in and uh, how to um, go about uh, reinstalling if you, uh, if you needed assist along the way. All right, I'm doing the same thing with this pinion gear then, spool gear, that's by a couple of different names. Checking all the teeth to make sure that they're uniform and also putting some grease on there. And what we do is we center this yoke over the two springs, push down, put a little bit of grease onto the eccentric, and we can install the jack, just like that. We want to put a little bit of grease onto the bottom of the jack where it's going to slide under the bridge when that's installed. Okay, next up then is to put that bridge on. I install the bridge by pushing down on that pinion gear, putting this in behind, and rolling the bridge until it's holding the pinion gear down. Next up, you have that fully threaded screw. Now, that one didn't pop out when we, uh, when we took the side plate off, but it's a fully threaded screw. Put it back in there if you took it out. And the dog goes on that, and now you can see that the spring is resting up against the little stud in the side plate here. And you need to press down on the spring. Kind of hard to see in this, but that spring is pressed down. And here's your stud. And this spring is sitting here. So press down on that. Oh, our little shield came out. And we can turn it until you lock in on that piece. Make sure that that gear comes through the hole before you do any tightening. Then one or two turns. Don't, don't lock down the side plate yet. Get the other screws in first. That's just from experience. These things have some fairly tight tolerances in them. And if you start screwing down one end, you may not be able to get the other screws started. I go north, south, east, west on these. Fully threaded screws go below. This is the bottom of the reel. And the shielded ones, as we talked about before, well, they're the ones that go through the, the case and hold the springs of the yoke. So they need to go up top. Now, your reel will work if you swap them around. Uh, but the problem is, uh, from time to time, the uh, coils on that spring could catch the thread of a fully threaded screw. So avoid that problem by just making it work easier. All right, so that's that. This little collar or sleeve or ferrule or whatever the appropriate name is for it is done. I'm going to go ahead and put the drag adjuster on then. And we can put the whole thing on. Now normally I don't on a reel that I have screws to put into the side plate because these things get in the way. But we don't have screws here. We have that single screw take apart. And as a result of that you have a uh, you can put this on to gain leverage when you need to turn this and lock that into the channels with those three studs I was showing you before. Right now we just want to line that uh, indentation in the handle screw with the hold fast screw hole, just like that. You'll see there's a little scallop there. 
put that whole fast nut in, or screw rather. That's the little one, and again, that's in my parts tray, so I know where to look for these things. And that's the side plate. We could give that a spin, make sure everything's working nicely, which it is. We can th throw the overthrow. We want to make sure that we can backpedal this wheel. Make sure that our free spool is working. We've already oiled the bearing here. The uh, spool is clean, so nothing's required there. I do like to put a little bit of grease onto the shaft on this side that's going to ride inside that spool gear. So we haven't got to that. Now we can ins insert the shaft. And then you just want to work it where you find the indentations for those studs. And then just a short turn. So you can see that the screw is locked in that hole here. And then just tighten it down a couple of turns. Give it a test. Make sure there's some free play in the spool. There's a little bit needed there. More importantly, let's tighten up the drags. Make sure that those are working. Those are about as tight as they're going to get. So that's it. So uh, if you have a 140, you now know what it's made of. You know, now know why everybody likes these reels for casting. Look at that, it just spins forever with those ball bearings and a little bit of oil. Nice casting reel. Uh, if you need to service it, you now know how, to, know how to service this reel. And if you have one that needs service and you're a little bit reluctant to do it, uh, well, I service reels by mail too. So if you want to contact me, use the email on my business card that follows this. Again, thank you to first responders and essential personnel. Uh, we really do appreciate all of your efforts during this pandemic. And as for efforts during the pandemic, I'm going to try and continue to post these on a daily basis until we get through this thing, just because I know it helps to relieve some stress out there, and even if uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. So uh, with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you like this to see more. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be trying to answer those for you. And with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.